What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Phil. That's Sam. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel. We are Bars and Barbells. And today, we're coming to something that seems to be pretty relevant in the world right now. Yep. Unfortunately, there's a big conflict going on in the Middle East that seems to never cease. I don't know. I wish that we could just find some peace. That would be fantastic. But, peace in the Middle East. That's right. But uh, that's out of our control. What is in our control is getting to learn a bit more. And uh, you, know, you hear so much about the Iron Dome and this uh, obviously pretty effective defense mechanism that Israel has. And I think the U.S. has talked about even building their own as well. And um, so I, I think we've mentioned on other videos as well, it seems like defense capabilities are going to yeah. be more important going forward because the yeah. advancement of weapons, right? You know, you got to keep up with that. But if you have a better defense and those weapons can't penetrate that system, then you're ahead of the ball game. So we don't know too much about the Iron Dome missile uh, defense system, right, Sam? I don't know anything about it. I've heard you talk about it a couple times. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, the uh, surface level discussions, but I don't know the details of how it works. I think there's multiple components as to how it works. So every I'm time I hear the dome, I think of like the Black Panther movie where like this big, like this giant big magic dome. Yeah. Invisible so that's shield. kind of what I'm envisioning, even though it's probably not very realistic. So we're about to find out. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it would be, like I said, appropriate to do this right now. Um, maybe people in general don't know as well, like us, how it works. And uh, if you got any other insights, because you are familiar with the technology used, drop them down below. We always appreciate learning on this channel. And like I said, that's what we're are here to deal with this one. So you ready, Sam? I am. Let's do it. Let's go. The Iron Dome missile defense system first detects and tracks incoming threats within a 100 kilometers range using radar. It then transfers this data to the battle management control system and the launcher, which relay it to the interceptor. When a specific threat is confirmed, an interceptor missile is launched to destroy the incoming rocket before it reaches the predicted impact area. Mm. The interceptor missile uses its electro-optical sensor to track and target the incoming rockets, aiming to get as close as possible to intercept them effectively. Mm. We will also look at the basic parts of the Tahir and how it works in step-by-step -step formats and not to forget a short comparison with the Qassam and the Iranian-built Grad rockets, all in the videos ahead so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. The Iron Dome system comprises of three central components. Number one, battle management and weapon control. Number two, missile firing unit. Number three, detection and tracking radar. While a typical Iron Dome battery includes three to four launchers, mm. each capable of holding up to 20 interceptor missiles. 20. Missile firing unit. In this unit, there are 20 Tamer interceptor missiles. Okay. A single launcher protects the area of a medium-sized city for strategic installations. It has been reported that each battery is capable of protecting an area of approximately 150 square kilometers, that is approximately 12 by 12 kilometers. Wow. Battle Management and Weapon Control, BMC. The control center for the Iron Dome system is responsible for managing the system's operations and coordinating the interception of threats. The system estimates the track threat points at impact and selects to intercept only those that will fall within the protected area. Mm. This prevents unnecessary launches against non-threatening targets and makes Iron Dome a very cost-effective defense systems. Detection and Tracking Radar It can detect artillery weapon locations up to 100 kilometers in air defense operational missions. While in air surveillance mode, it can evaluate up to 1,100 targets at once. The Iron Dome, Tahir Interceptor Missile by Rafael can be divided into four distinct sections. The first section encompasses the navigation or guidance system, which plays a critical role in ensuring the missile's accuracy and precision. Moving along the missile, we come to the warhead section. Positioned at the rear of the missile is the solid propellant motor. Lastly, we have the final section, which includes the nozzle and the rear fins. Let's break down the components of this interceptor missile. Starting from the front, we have the radome sections, which play a crucial role in protecting the sensitive components within. Moving further back, the missile is equipped with a multi-seeker mode featuring electro-optical sensors that control the steering fins at the rear. Mm. These sensors enhance the missile's accuracy and targeting capabilities. Oh, that's cool. Just behind it is one of the key features is the proximity fuse designed to intercept short-range threats. This laser-controlled fuse activates when the missile approaches within 10 meters of the target, wow. ensuring precise and timely detonation. The missile is armed with a fragmentation warhead that delivers a powerful punch capable of destroying enemy missiles effectively. All this formidable power is harnessed using a solid fuel propellant, propelling the missile at speeds of around Mach 2, 
making it incredibly swift and responsive. Mm. What's truly intriguing about this small interceptor missile is its impressive range, covering approximately 4 to 70 kilometers, which translates to roughly 43 miles. This extensive range allows it to engage and neutralize threats at various distances, further enhancing its versatility and effectiveness. Wow, how complex is this system? Pretty wild. I mean, this design is insane. It's very effective, obviously, for very, dis very different reasons in terms of cost effectiveness, because every time you launch one of these missiles, I don't know how much it costs, like 50,000 or 100,000, 200,000 or whatever. But obviously, that means you don't want to be wasting missiles as a response. So they have the calculations in place to identify which missiles are threats and air, you know, uh, targets that are coming in that are going to be threats and then, you know, how to use the missiles as a defense system but then even the missile how it actually defends and uh, you know calculates when it's going to explode at a distance that's so small you have to be so yeah. exact right with your calculations i assume most of this is is done computerized and um, uses an element of artificial intelligence which we've talked about before in other videos as well how it's going to play a huge role going forward um, but really really an intricate defense system for sure it is for sure. It's really cool. I think the only thing I'm confused about is like, why do they call it a dome? This has nothing to do with a dome. <laughs> because I think it acts as like this a, is more of like an interception tool, in my opinion. I might had him envisioning like this giant iron dome. Yeah, that like, doesn't this is like exist, nothing. Samantha. Yeah, maybe it did though. How am I supposed to know? Well, I don't. I've never been to Israel. So the reason why it's a dome, right, is because it protects like a circular. It, of it protects a dome around the city, right? So that's another thing that's cool about this is if you place it like around an important city like Tel Aviv, for example, and I think this is where it's, I think, good and bad because you have to build this into the city, meaning that if you were targeting this defense system, you'd be dropping rockets into the city mm -hmm. to you know, target the defense system because you're building it in the city to protect that city with a certain radius, right? And and diameter of that dome that you're talking about. So it's really cool in that sense that it provides this area of protection, but at the same time that ends up being a target. So that's why we're getting into the the dome that doesn't exist from the Black Panthers perspective, <laughs> but does uh, permit itself to defend in, you know, a strategic um really decisive way yeah the only other question i have which i'm sure maybe they'll answer it so we'll see but it's just capacity like they mentioned at the beginning that it can hold a certain amount of missiles and that it can defend a certain amount of missiles so like what if somebody sends more missiles than that then what do you do yeah well i think that it comes down to the aggressor how many missiles can they shoot at one time sure. and it's probably been built around the idea knowing that their Most people's capacity or whatever yeah their, their enemies are what their capabilities probably are and they probably need to upgrade as that goes on i think the other thing they mentioned in here as well was the battery system right so i think in order to launch these they not only have to identify and make sure like you said they have the capability to launch uh, or enough missiles to proceed with the launches i think the batteries have to be operational as well to make sure they have enough power True. to continue to do it True. it's to roughly 43 miles this extensive range allows it to engage and neutralize threats at various distances further enhancing its versatility and effectiveness the tahir missile boasts a length of approximately 9.3 feet with a diameter measuring 166 millimeters or 6.3 inches. Wow, that's And it carries a weight of around small. 198 pounds or 90 kilograms. Damn. Mm, to effective. provide some perspective and help us grasp its dimensions, let's consider a size comparison with a human being. As you can observe, the missile does not appear excessively large when placed next to a person. Furthermore, this is the Patriot Air Defense Missile, which has been featured in our recent videos and the formidable S-400 missile system, it is here that, that the huge. Tahir missile's relative dimension becomes even more apparent. The correct comparison wow. in this case would be with missiles like the locally produced Kwasem missile and not to be overlooked, the Iranian Grad missiles, which have a range of approximately 50 to 70 miles. That's insane. Since these missiles are locally manufactured, the Kwasem comes in various shapes and sizes, reflecting the adaptability and versatility of their production. That's a lot of missiles. In this animation, multiple Quasim or Phaedra 5 rockets are launched from the opposition side, intentionally designed to overwhelm the Iron Dome missile defense systems. For this scenario, let's take a look how the Iron Dome missile defense system works in basic step-by-step -step formats. Step 1. Radar detects and tracks the threat from a 100 km radius. Step 2. The data is transferred from the radar to the battle management control system to the launcher and from the launcher to the interceptor. 
The system estimates the track threat points at impact and selects to intercept only those that will fall within the protected area. Step 3. Only when that threat is determined, an interceptor missile is fired to destroy the incoming rocket before it reaches the predicted impact area. Step 4. The missile will track and target the rockets with its electro-optical sensor and get as close to the incoming threat as possible. Consider three scenarios. Scenario 1. The Iron Dome missile is designed to strike its target head-on from the front. When it reaches the assigned target, Slope. its advanced sensors and laser system are activated. This activation triggers the proximity fuse warhead, loaded with fragmentation rounds within a range of just 10 meters from the target, so ensuring crazy. maximum damage upon impact. Scenario 2. While in motion, the missile can intercept incoming threats at a 60-degree angle. Onboard sensors trigger the fragmentation warhead, allowing it to effectively intercept off-center threats. Scenario 3. However, intercepting a target at a 90-degree angle leads to a higher failure rate. This occurs because the fragmentation from the warhead scatters away from the incoming rockets, compromising interception effectiveness. Right. In short, it has its pros and cons for comparison. The Hamas Qasam missile costs a mere $80, wow. while the Iranian Grad missile costs around $1,000. That doesn't sound right. On the other hand, the Iron Dome interceptor missile costs a staggering oh, okay. $50,000, <laughs> and one single battery in the Iron Dome costs around $150 million. Wow. But Damn. with a reported 90% success rate, I guess some things are just priceless. In our next video, we are going to look at how the Qasam missile and the Iranian missile works. We make original animation videos just like this Attack Cargo 130 gunship in Blender software. Support us by... I was ready to get into the next missile video mm -hmm. there. I forgot. We were done. We were just the doing anime. the Iron Dome. Yeah, the animation in this is really cool. You found it helpful to learn the process of it? Yeah, for sure. I'm a visual person, a visual learner, so I liked it. Yeah. And uh, I think this offered a good perspective into the nuance about you know how it plays out and the steps there that need to take place. Um, Obviously, I think as well, they must have some external system that maybe feeds into this that we looked at here, the Iron Dome system, because there's alerts that come out, I think, in advance. So maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just the distance is whatever they said here. I don't know if it was 150 kilometers or whatever. And that's far enough in advance. But it seems like to me what's going on right now is that the Israeli intelligence will notify um, around like 10, 15 minutes in advance when the, la the, the rockets have been launched from Iran. And so I don't know if that means that they're going to feed that information, you know, the 15 minutes in advance so that this knows it's coming, the dome system, and that will provide them, you know, a little bit more lean way of having to respond within 150 kilometers because I'm not sure of the geographic location between Iran and Israel and how far that actually is, but that seems like way too short. So, um, and I think that Iranian missiles travel pretty fast. So they, I feel like they would need more time than the 150 kilometers, but um, I'm not really sure. So maybe you guys can add some insights down below. Yeah, I have not the slightest clue. So I would be learning with that as well. All right, well, that was educational. And that's what we love to do mm -hmm. on this channel is learn about military content and you know how the world is evolving, whether that's for warfare, but you know culturally or whatever, right? So um, let us know if there's anything else that we should check out related to this. Maybe uh, you know this is gonna be a short-lived video and it won't matter really soon. That would be great. We can move on. We can have peace in the Middle East, like we said, uh, or it might escalate further, hopefully not, but uh, we'll find out real soon. We're gonna get this one up as soon as we can. So um, hopefully you guys are safe. Uh, hopefully you're having a great day and hopefully we see you in our next video. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.